I think we can probably kick off if there's any stragglers they can just come in and pick up. Um, so welcome again, everybody. Um, seen a lot of the same faces that were on last night, and a few different a few different names and different faces as well. It's good to see. Today we're here with Jamie McBrerty. Jamie's going to be talking about growth mindset. Jamie is an expert in this field. He's been working with the the Scottish national teams for the last three years now, and he's done a couple of seminars for the coaches of Scottish ice hockey as well. Now he's here to talk to some players. Um, usual sort of rules apply, guys. We'll keep you all on mute just so it doesn't get too rowdy. Um, if any of you have any questions during this presentation, if you drop, if you just write them in the chat box, like we always ask, and if you can just stick your name, what club you're, you're, you're at and what age you are as well in your question, that would be great. Um, the other good bit of advice is, if I'm, I'm using a laptop here, I know some of you will be using tablets and phones. If you click on the little view button, and if you click on speaker view, it's a much better way to watch the webinar. Rather, you, you're just that way you're just seeing the person that's actually speaking, and not um, not everyone's face on the on the screen. So um, I think without any further ado, we're going to hand over to Jamie, who's going to give us some very good insight and very good knowledge on growth mindset. Okay, Jamie, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, absolute pleasure to be here this morning. Um, now. Don't think that you're just going to be sitting here and putting your feet up and listening. I'm looking for a lot of engagement. If you're sitting there yourself and your parents are not next to you, go and pull them out of their bed and get them next to you because this is just as vital for them as well um, as yourself and for coaches. So um, I'm going to share a few slides, but listen, I'm going to kind of keep it semi-informal. It's more of a chat about you, you today um, and whether you're a coach, whether you're a player, whether you're a parent, uh, my job today is to, is for you to take something away that you could think about taking on board going forward. Um, so I'm going to share a few slides because I think I've got permission to do that. Uh, I'll keep jumping back and forward um, from from these. Um, so here we are. So icebreaker. I'm going to leave that slide up there, yeah. And we're not going to do an icebreaker, but the point I put this slide up at the start is, if you see a slide like this, how does it make you feel? And when you see an icebreaker, you're going to be able to speak in front of other people. I'm going to, be able to ask you to do a couple of things. I might ask you to come on and unmute yourself. Use the chat box and tell me how does that make you feel when you see the slide icebreaker? Anybody, come on, I need engagement. Don't just sit back, your cup of tea and your piece of toast and everything else. How does that make you feel? Cold, nervous, apprehensive, good. <coughs> Cold, I like that. Anybody else? How does it make you feel? Excited, good. <laughs> Double FS, I'm not going to see what that is. Tongue tied, awkward, yeah, good. Yeah, look at all these feelings coming up. Amazing. So, um, isn't, it, isn't it strange that just from one slide or you're watching on your phone, that these feelings are automatically generated just by one slide? Yeah, you're, you're automatically generating these feelings of whether it be cold, whether it be nervous, whether it be, oh my God, whether it be excited. These feelings are automatically generated just by one slide. Yeah, and a lot of people do feel nervous and anxious. And, oh my God, what's happening next? <clears throat> because essentially what I'm doing, I'm making you feel a particular way. And I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to put if, if there's parents or coaches on the screen. So we're here to talk about growth mindset today. So unmute yourself and tell me what is growth mindset? Don't all rush at once. Now again, listen, that was just a hypothetical question. The reason I did that, again, <clears throat> was how did that make you feel? 
I put you on the spot there. I put you on the spot to say, actually, oh, there's no danger. I'm coming on the screen to try to define what growth mindset is. There's another 42 people on the call. What if, what, what if I don't get it right? What if people laugh at me? Actually, public speaking, I feel really, really nervous about that. So again, what I did there was, was a major feel in a particular way. Yeah. Now, some people like stepping forward. Some people like feeling that, that, that pressure. Some people like speaking in front of other people. But about 97% of the population don't. And the point of this is, is that everything I just said there about what will people think about me? What if I don't? Could have, would have, should have. These are all images that we place in our mind about what hasn't happened yet. And it's a lie. You've told yourself a lie about what could happen, which has made you feel nervous, which has made you feel scared, which has made you feel that I'm going to retract. Actually, it's safer for me to put my camera off than it is having my camera on just in case Jamie picks on me. Yeah? But the good news about this all is, is what, what if we could be better? What if we could actually inspire other people? What if we are happy and comfortable speaking in front of other people? What could be the consequences of that? Because it all starts with thoughts. You're, thinking, oh, you're probably thinking, right, Jamie, what's your point caller? My point caller is this. We all love feeling comfortable. Yeah, but in our homes, heating's on, cup of tea, sitting with people that love, and we feel safe. We feel in control. Actually, everything's kind of predictable today because I know what's coming next. But what I just did there was, is I took away that feeling of control. I took away that feeling of safety. I took away that feeling of predictability. And it made you feel slightly apprehensive. It made you feel slightly nervous. It made you feel slightly scared. And when we step into that fear zone, we automatically behave in a certain way. It's just conditioning. You know, 98% of the results you've got in your life right now have came from the automatic behaviour that you've got. Only 2 to 4% of the results you've got in your life is by thinking and consciously putting yourself in a position. Because one of the biggest things that we fear is, the, is the, the opinions of other people. We fear, what if, what if people aren't pleased? What if, what if I don't do what is expected of me? You know, we're trying to conform to this life that we lead, trying to please other people all the time. And what I love saying to people is that when we think about who we are, who are we? Who are you? When you actually speak to yourself, because... I'm not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am. I am who I think that you think that I think I am. And that's how we govern our life. Yeah, we, we live our lives thinking that you think what you think about me, which controls us. And that's where the lack of self-confidence comes. That's where we don't put ourselves in that fear zone. And if you take that word fear and use an acronym, what is fear? Fear is false events appearing real. You create a situation in your head that hasn't happened yet that makes you feel scared. But the truth is that the feeling of fear and the feeling of excitement are exactly the same emotions. It's just that we interpret the feelings differently depending on the situation we're in. Some people put themselves in that fear zone regularly. They'll love that, that buzz. They'll love that feeling of unpredictability. They'll love that feeling of, oh, what's going to happen? Because what they believe and what they know is that beyond that zone is where the learning happens. This is where the magic happens. Every single one of us, whether you're a parent, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player, you have got more potential than you know you have got. You've got more potential than the people have told you that you've got. So you've got more growth. There's only two things that happen in life. 
you're either creating or you're disintegrating. And it's a choice. And the choice comes from the thoughts. So why am I saying this? Because this, this is where mindset starts from. Before we go into growth mindset, this is where mindset starts from. It's all about thoughts. It's all about feelings. It's all about behaviours. And all these three things, the composite of them, dictate the results you get in your life. So whether you've got aspirations to be the next best coach or to be in the national squad, to be the next best player that this country has produced, whether you're thinking, you know what, as a parent, I want to give the best platform for my children to go and progress, it falls down to thoughts, it falls down to feelings, and it falls down to behaviours. So <laughs> let's put this mindset thing in a more context. Use the chat box again, okay? Go and tell me one thing that you are good at. Everybody, one thing. And again, I'm pushing you out of the comfort zone here because in Scotland, we don't blow our own trumpet. No. Gonna be a bomb. Hockey, good. Interesting. Snowboarding, schoolwork. You're in a minority, Callum. Brilliant, fantastic. <laughs> Caitlin says football. Is that on the computer or is that actually in real life? <laughs> good, good. Okay, go and tell me something that you're not so good at yet. What are you not so good at? Go and tell me things you, you need to you need to improve. Anybody? Good. Algebra. Great. So as, as you can see, Caitlin says, that's like the old advert, eh? Caitlin says. <laughs> so um, as you can see, that there is a number of different examples there. And Adam, the, what, the example you just provided there in terms of public speaking, is the number one fear in the world. Speaking in front of other people is the number one fear. People fear that more than actually dying. So why is that? Well, again, it goes back to, it goes back to that fear zone. It goes back to actually, it goes back to that. It goes back to the comfort zone. And the reason I say that and the reason I get you to share those examples is that your mindset has been conditioned and programmed since you were born. Every bit of language, you speak English. Most of us speak English. Some of us might speak in a different language. You never chose what language you would speak. You never chose what food you like. You never chose what sport you would go into. You know, the condition we've got, the program we've got is because of the environment we've been used to. Yes, now absolutely, there is a certain bit of genetics that give us the upper hand. And we're not here to talk about uh, the kind of talent development process today, but there's a mix of genetics, there's a mix of environment. But we still have potential to change. You know, this predicament we're going through just now, we've had to adapt. We've had to change. We've had to move forward and, and deal with the situation in front of us. And this is where mindset starts from. Mindset is essentially a set of beliefs that affect how you think, how you feel, you behave. And growth mindset is a belief that you can't improve with these things. We're not talking about being world class. We're not talking about being the best of the best. What we are talking about here is that every single person having the potential to be the best they can be. Okay? Everybody believing that tomorrow I can create a new personal best. Actually, I can deal with challenge, I can deal with failure, I can deal with setbacks because these make me grow. Now, I'm not going to spend the rest of the time today talking about growth mindset because I think we've all got a good understanding of what that is. You know, it is a belief that we can get better. What I want to do today is I want to talk about something else that is just as vital in moving forward. And it's talking about goals. Okay. So I'm going to ask every single one of you, including parents, including coaches, Go tell me what your goal is. Actually, no, don't. Go and tell me, have you got a goal? Yes or no? 
for this year, do you have a goal? Good. What well, yes is excellent. Fantastic. So I'm going to really strip back what these goals are, and you don't need to tell me what the goals are. Okay. Now, what we're going to think about today is that this slide here of champions are made not born. That might seem like a cliche. That might seem like yeah, okay, and we might. Actually, when you see the word champion, what does that mean to you? What does the word champion mean to you? Well, who is a champion and what, what makes a champion? Anybody? Best player? The best, the best, the best, hardest worker, good. Someone who achieves. Good, the best. Committed. Hard work. So, as you can see there, there's a, a mix between these soft skills that is very much about you being the best, whether that's in a group of people or whether it's just yourself, or there's something about there being the best in your field, the best in you know the group of people you're with. Um, and if we really focus on the word champion, my definition of champion is that you become the best version of yourself. And by becoming the best version of yourself, then potentially you might be selected for particular squads. You might get a medal. You might get a particular level of finance. You might get something as a result of that. But being a champion is you giving yourself that self-respect that you want. And the way I, look at, I say it to people is that, think about that. Who's the person you speak most to every single day? And the person you speak most to every single day is yourself. And what I say to people, or what I, I ask people is, would you speak to other people the way that you speak to yourself? What do you tell yourself? What do you tell yourself every single day? Do you, do you, do you are you your biggest cheerleader? Are you your biggest supporter? Are you the person who's motivating yourself? Say, yes, I can do better. Come on. Or is there another lot of voice in your head saying, who do you think you are? Is there another lot of voice in your head who is saying, hmm, maybe this is not for you? The self-doubt, the self-limiting beliefs. Listen, this is absolutely natural. But this is linked to the goals you set. And this is why I'm saying this. It goes back to the feelings we've got. Now, we're all passionate about hockey. We're all passionate about the sport. Absolutely, we should do. But this is where it links the goals. And I want you to really think about the goals you've got, whether you're a parent, whether you're a coach, or whether you're a player right now. There's three type of goals that we set. And these link to the motivation you've got every single day. Every single one of us. How many of you just now are saying, oh, I just can't find the motivation. Well, oh, every day kind of rolls into another. It's just like Groundhog Day. Oh, the snow, the wind, and the cold. And I, mean, I, would just, I would just like to complain. Yeah, sometimes we, we, we can't meet our fitness goals. Sometimes we're, 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 we're thinking about what, what we don't have instead of what we can have. Now, when we like this to goals, it gets us to really think about the person we are, yeah, and how, why we set the goals we set. Before I tell you about what ABC type goals are, who would like to have a stab? What is the purpose of a goal? Why do we set goals? Anybody, why do we set goals? So you have something to aim for, to achieve it. To progress, motivation, do better, create, good, good. Plan, excellent. So as you see there, there's a mix of interpretations why we set goals, yeah? Now, if somebody said there is to achieve, somebody said there is to, something to focus on. The purpose of a goal is to grow. The purpose of a goal is simply to grow. The, it's not to get, it's not to achieve, it's to grow. 
And this is where the ABC type goals come into it. An A type goal is a goal that you set, that you have already done. So for example, in November last year, I had a goal to buy a new car. The four years before that, I bought a new car. So I knew how to buy a new car. That would not constitute a goal. I've done it before, I can do it again. There's absolutely no growth attached to me doing something that I've already done. A B-type goal is a goal that you think you can achieve. We put goals down knowing, actually, if I do A, B, and C, and the composite of that, there's absolutely a chance that I'm going to get that. Actually, I will get that. So, for example, not a lot of people go through their driving lessons. And after a number of driving lessons, they do the driving test and they'll get the license. Now, some people need more driving lessons than others. Some people sit their test more times than others. But if you go through that process, you will get a driving license. It's the C-type goals are the ones that not a lot of people are used to setting. And these are the things that scare you and excite you at the same time. So a C-type goal is something that you would love to get. It's these dreams. It's these visions. It's these things going, oh, I would love that. So thinking about as a coach, as a player, you know, what level do you want to get to? And these are the goals that it's not normal to set. People say to you, oh, get your head out of the sky. Don't be so silly. Just make something, goals that are more achievable, more realistic, because we didn't want to fail now, because that's not what we're doing as a society. We've got to kind of limit our potential here. But it's the C-type goals that are the things that pull us forward. Yeah? And these are the things that provide that motivation. If you know what to do to reach your goal, it's not a big enough goal. And you need to set a goal that's to achieve something that's so big, it's so exhilarating, that it excites you and it scares you at the same time. These are the goals that pull you out of your bed every single day. These are the things when people say to me that provide you with the motivation. These are the goals that actually, if I asked you, what is your morning routine like? Do you get up? Do you read? Do you exercise? Do you activate your brain? Do you switch on your body to take on the rest of the day? Or do you snooze? 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 Then get up, then you rush about, then you're, you shout at everybody and you feel a bit anxious and stressed for the day that's coming ahead. What's your evening routine like? Do you value what you do in the evening? Because essentially your evening routine is your warm up to your morning routine. How many of us are dictated and controlled by these mobile devices? How many of us, the last thing we do in the day is feel this phone and the first thing that we do in the day is feel this phone? How many? And you know yourself, when you scroll through social media, you go through, through it, and you stop, you go, oh, I feel a lot a bit tired now. Because what happens is that these things are mentally draining us, but we're addicted. We're addicted to these things. Do you know the people who created these mobile devices, the ban these in their houses to their children? because they know the damage it's doing to productivity, to relationships, to actually being productive. And one hour's use of a mobile phone releases the same amount of chemicals in your brain as dangerous drugs do. They call it digital cocaine. Dopamine releases in your brain. One hour of these is the same amount of dopamine that's released in somebody would take some cocaine. Yeah, that's why you try to take a mobile device of a five-year-old, it's like taking something off, off an addict. You can see the behavior happens. And why am I saying this? Because if you want to be the best, if you want to grow in your field, if you want to be the best ice hockey player, if you want to be the best coach, if you want to provide the best environment for your child, then we need to be disciplined and set boundaries on these things here. Because these things here are gonna limit the potential we've all got. 
and it's coming up with an agreement. And why am I saying this? Because our relationship to sleep is the biggest thing that is limiting what we do. How many of us right now are feeling a little bit sleepy because we never got to bed at a, great, a reasonable time last night? But it's a Friday, Jamie. We're allowed to do it on a Friday. But it's a habit. Everything we do is habits. We are creatures of habits. But our habits dictate our behaviours and our behaviours dictate our results. There was a, a documentary about a rowing team, the, the British rowing team in one of the Olympics that were coming up. And it was titled, Will This Make the Boat Go Faster? And the four of them in the, in, in, in the rowing team said, if we are choosing to do a certain thing, we ask ourselves this question, will it make the boat go faster? And if the answer is no, we do not do it. And they, and they decided and committed to doing that for four years. Now, you might be sitting here as an ice hockey player going, Jamie, but four years is a long time. In four years' time, every single one of you is an ice hockey player. You will be in a different place than you are now. Do you want to be the best? Do you want to actually have a career in this? Do you want to give yourself the be best platform to go and experience the sport that you love across the world? And if the answer is yes to that, then we need to think about the habits we've got every single day. Are you using an excuse, ah, but I live in Scotland and we won't have the same opportunities as anybody else? But you have got the same opportunity as anybody else in the world right now, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player. You choose whether you want to be the best or not. And that comes down, you do not need money to be the best. What you need is discipline, what you need is belief, and what you need is a set of habits that will give you the best opportunity to move forward. And why does that link to mindset? Because everything starts with something in your head, which is a thought. What do you think about every single day? Do you think about, you know what, this is probably not going to be the thing for me. Do you think about, you know what, I'll just be all right what I'm doing just now. Do you think about, actually, I want to be the best. Do you think about playing in front of thousands of people? Do you think about earning a bit of money from this? Do you think, whatever you think about every single day, and you believe that, and you feel that you're going to get that or not, will dictate the behaviours you've got, and will dictate your results. And that's what mindset is. Mindset is something you think about every single day. It's a composite of thoughts, feelings and actions. Look at the results you've got in your life right now. Are you happy with them? Are you happy with the results you've got in your life right now? Because if you're not, then you need to change something. How many of us here blame everything else for the results you've got right now? It's not my fault. It's everybody else's. Now, the thing is, it's a, a level playing field, so everybody's in the same predicament. When you come out the other side of this, when you get back on the ice, are you going to be the best you can be? Whether you're a coach, whether you're a parent, whether you're a player. Because the thing is, there's other people, apart from you, working harder right now. There's other people using this opportunity to be stronger. There's other people using the time they've got on their hands right now to learn more. Do you really understand the game? Do you watch the game enough? Are you giving yourself the, the platform when you come back? Because when you come back, bam, the intensity of training is going to go up because you're not training just now. Yep, you're going to be excited, you're going to be buzzing, you're going to be flying about the ice. But what pressure is that going to put in your body? How prone are you going to be to injury? You've been waiting on this for so long, you're on the ice for half an hour. Ah, oh, my hamstring. Ah, oh, my ankle. Ah, oh, my hamstring. Whatever it is. And you're injured. All because you've not been looking after yourself. You've not been doing the strength and conditioning work you're meant to be doing. You haven't been eating the right things. You've not been drinking the right amount of fluids. You've not been getting the right amount of rest. And your body's going to be in shock when you go back in the ice. So you've got a choice right now. Oh, I'm not motivated. Oh, I can't get in my bed. What is your goal right now? Do you want to be the best? Because if you want to be the best, guess what? There's competition. There's other people out there that are going to strive for this more than what you do. And it all starts with mindset. It's not, it's not about people having 
a better set of circumstances of yourself. Do you go every single day and live and breathe twenty four seven ice hockey? Because if you don't, then don't expect to be the best. Nothing's handed on a plate to you. Whether you're a coach or a player, you've got to go and actually work your backside off to get the things you've got to do. And that comes down to culture, comes down to your environment, that comes down to choices. You get to choose and dictate where you're going to take this. That might sound cheesy. Yeah, I'm here to uncheese the cheesiness here. This is life. You know, mindset starts with what do you truly believe that you can achieve? Because if you read back hundreds, thousands of years, it all starts with a thought in your head. Everything you see around you right now, the seat you're sitting on, the headphone set you've got on, the laptop or the phone that you're watching, everything started as an idea. Everything started with an, a thought in somebody's head. And somebody was that determined to make it real then they never gave up until it actually came to fruition. That's your life. You get to choose what kind of life you've got. I work with people across the world where it all starts with mindset. Mindset, actually the results in your life is 95% mindset, 5% strategy. That's how important your mindset is. Yeah, how many of us are sitting back right now going, oh, it just wasn't for me. Well, the circumstances and the stuff never really happened, went my way. Everything's a choice. Everything's a choice. And when you believe that, I mean, you think about it every single day. I, I do a lot of work with players. And one thing I say to them is, what is your goal? Yeah, where do you want to be in 12 months' time? Where do you want to be in five years' time? Do you see yourself being that best player, that best coach? Because without that vision, there's no drive. And then what you can do is that Everest goal, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the final destination. And what you need to do is you need to set base camp goals. If everybody watches a documentary on climbing Mount Everest, they, they don't just do half an hour on the person at the top of Mount Everest. There's a journey. The journey is actually we need to get to Nepal before we start going out there. So that's a journey within itself. Before we think about Mount Everest, how do we get there? And then have you ever watched somebody climbing Mount Everest there's base camps. If you can't get to the first base camp, don't even think about getting to the top of Mount Everest. Actually, some people do not make the first base camp because it's too tough. They don't have the resilience. They don't have the, the, the belief that they're going to get there. Actually, the, the, the crumble at the first side of challenge. How many people do you know in ice hockey that started to play? They thought they would be brilliant after five minutes. It was too tough. So they chucked it. Not because they never had the potential or the, 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 the ability to do it. They never had the, 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 the desire and the grit to go and do that. So your base camp goal is where do you want to be when you come out the other side of this lockdown? That's your first base camp goal. Are you going to be back on the ice and moaning at your coach and at your mum and dad or the ice or your skates or your stick or everything else? Are you going to say, actually, I'm the best I can be right now? When I come back on the ice here, I mean, the curtains unveil to this, actually back to playing, are you going to be stronger than other people the same age as you? Because that's a choice. Everybody's going to be coming out at the same time as you. When that starter gun goes, right, boom, we're back again. And that comes from mindset. Are you doing the things you need to do every single day to make you, give you the best opportunity to prevent yourself from injury? to give you the best opportunity to be selected for squads, the best opportunity to put the best session you can put on, as you're giving your child the best they can be in terms of the food and the, the hydration and the sleep and the discipline. And as I say, you know what, if you want to be the best player, we've got to, and it's not sacrifices, you need to invest in yourself every single day. And that's tough, it's hard, but everybody's in the same boat. So, sorry, carry on. Went on a bit there. So, um, has anybody got any questions or anything that I've said? You're going, Jamie, what are you on about? Or anything at all? Coaches, parents, players? Feel free to ask any question you like, guys, no matter how silly you might think it is. We, we want everybody that's on this call to have a really good understanding of what Jamie's talking about this, for us. Here's a question. Is anybody here, and as parents, players, coaches, who 
who inspires you? Who do you look up to and say, oh, wow. David Goggins. Can't hurt me. No sweary words on. Good. Who inspires you? How do we end with a growth mindset? I'll come back to that, Finley. Okay, so, so the examples that you've got in your head, <laughs> Caitlin says, <laughs> the examples you've got up there, okay, are the ones that maybe you're just sitting back and listening, no, you could be, be spectating. What is it that inspires you about these people? Why are you inspired? What makes you go, oh? Hard work. What is it that inspires you about them? The common thing here, hard work, work ethic, good. Overcoming adversity, fantastic. So you can see there that the examples that are coming up, there's nothing about achievements. There's nothing about actually what they've done. There's something about something that's deeply ingrained. Now, the truth is, us as human beings, we are the average of the five people we spend most time with. Okay? And we get a choice. Who do we spend most time with? And what I mean by that is you, you can spend time with people virtually. Who do you listen to every day? Who's the first person that you speak to in the morning? Is it Piers Morgan? See why showing it on the TV? No, is it actually I'm going to listen to somebody that's going to inspire me? I know a lot of people in sport um, listen to a lad called um, Alistair McCaw. Alistair was a, a triathlete from South Africa. Um, he came to Dundee. Um, I was doing a bit of work with Candon Karate Club in Dundee. He came across and you know, a, a lot of people listen to podcasts and they read books. So it's thinking about, you know, do the people you spend most time with, do they push you? Do they inspire you? Do they make you feel like you're going to be the best? Or do they pull you back? Do they limit you? Do they suck the life out of you? And it's sometimes tough because sometimes the, the, the loved ones who are around us that want us to be the best sometimes are just doing the best we can. But the whole thing about having a growth mindset, going back to, I um, can't remember who was saying it. Um, who was asking for, about growth mindset? Somebody said, how do, you, how do you end up with a growth mindset? It's the language we use with ourselves. It's the language we use with other people. What do we praise ourselves for? What do we praise other people for? Is it only when we achieve? Because we've been conditioned to think you only get praise when you've completed something. You only get praise when you've set a certain standard. You only get praise when you've accomplished whatever you've set up to do. Which means that the little base camp goals, how many of us actually celebrate getting to base camp one, base camp two, base camp three, four, five, six, 24? Or do we wait till we get to the end point? We get to the top of the only time you can celebrate is when you get to the top of the mountain, top of Mount Everest. Which means that people can progress 95% to the top, but maybe don't receive the top. But how much growth is actually applied? to the journey. Now, we don't celebrate success easily, I'll be honest, in this country, because we get pulled back down again. Who do you think you are? Or oh, actually, I won't celebrate success because I'm scared of what other people might say to me. You might have had something that was huge in your life about overcoming adversity, actually challenge, but you wouldn't tell anybody because you might think that that's just a battle, that's just a wee thing. It might be that you're getting out of your bed regularly. It might be that actually in these days and age, you're, 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 you've got a, a great routine. You know, a lot of people say, oh, this 
terrible situation we're in. And listen, we're, we're, there's no getting away that this has been hard for a lot of people. It's been hard in you know, personal circumstances for myself. There's been a lot of, well, a lot of really horrible stuff happening. But how many of us are actually going, you know what? I'm actually doing all right. Actually, the past 12 months has actually been the best 12 months I've probably had in my life. But we wouldn't tell anybody that because other people are having a bad time of it. So we can't really celebrate that success. We've got that growth. We can't celebrate actually, you know what, it's been a blessing in disguise this last 12 months because of a time in the family, the time to do certain things, of a time to grow. But because of the situation people are going through, I'm not telling anybody. So we're limiting ourselves again. So we're doing a blow on trumpet again. So we're conditioned to say, do not celebrate success. Actually, tell people how bad things are because that's how we conform to other things. It's easier to complain than it is to actually celebrate success. So when we set goals, we we'll limit our goals because we'll only set goals where we can say we've achieved something. We don't set goals up there because if we don't achieve it, we feel like we're a failure. But how much could we grow from here to here? If we, were, if we set the goal here, we can achieve it, no problem. But if we set the goal here, we go, oh, that would be so silly. But where could we be on the journey towards it? We got there. Would we, be, would we be better? Absolutely, we would be. So I was really thinking about goals. And the one thing I'm going to leave you with, right? The next time you play a game of ice hockey and your parent hasn't watched you play, actually, what's the first question they ask you after you come off a game and they haven't seen you play? What's the first question that you get asked about your game? How was it? That's not the question. Somebody tell me what the first question is. What was the score? Absolutely. What was the score? And then, depending on what your, your answer is, they then say, well, how did you get on? What was the score? We got beat. Oh, how did you get on? How did you, what was the score? We won. Oh, brilliant. How did you get on? And just that focus, you know, of the score unconsciously dictates how we communicate with one another. So the question I want you to agree right now with your parent is, you need to set a goal before every single game. And the goal is, what can I do today that's going to make me a better player? You need to agree that goal. Yeah, you need to agree on, is it something to do with my game? Is it something to do with my technical ability? Is it something to do with the tactical stuff that I need to improve on? I my coaches, I need to improve on this. So the first question that your coach or your parent asks you after the game is, how did you go on with the goal was set before the game? And that way, what you can start to do is have a focus on improvement. If you achieve your goal after the game, you say, yeah, I said I did well then you need to question yourself, was it the right goal? Did I stretch myself enough? And this links back to mindset. Because if you've got a purpose towards every training session, if you've got a purpose towards every game, in terms of setting a goal that's going to make you grow, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to grow every single training session. You're going to grow every single game. And you can come off and say, you know what? Today, regardless of the scoreline, I got better. And better is the best word that I can think of. Because if you are getting better, you're giving yourself the chance of improving and growing. Do you believe that you can get better? Because we are often dictated by the results we get. The results dictate how you think. And then your thinking dictates your feelings and your behaviours. And that's that cycle. But if you think, actually, I'm growing, I'm getting better. Achieve my goal. I'm achieving goals. I'm setting better goals then you can start to move forward, regardless of the scoreline. Because in sport, we're dictated by this. And absolutely, listen, we want to win. We're not taking away, we don't even want to win. But do we want to win without actually growing? Because back to, do you want to be the best? Sorry, Stephen, I can speak all day about this. Jamie, I can sit and listen to you speak all day about this. Guys, if any, if any of you have got any questions, Jamie's happy to stay on for another 10 minutes or so. If you want to stick them in the chat box, 
whether it be on growth mindset or just anything to do with sport. If you anything you want to ask Jamie, now's the time to do it, okay? So I've got a question then, Jamie, to start off. As, as a coach, um, what can coaches do to help players that maybe don't have the, the maybe the A, the motivation, or B, the self-belief to try and to try and reach their, their, their goals and their targets? It starts with goals and targets. Do you have a true understanding of what the goals and targets are? Because demotivation or lack of motivation comes from not having clarity in where you're going. So it, it, it could be with life. You know, if you are waking up every single day and you're falling to bed and you're feeling demotivated because you haven't got a clear understanding where you're going. So we need to have a goal. And the goal needs to be something <clears throat> that excites you. You know, can you visualise what that future state's going to be? Is that, you know, where, where are you going to be in 12 months' time? Three years' time? Five years' time? Does it excite you? Because if it doesn't, then guess what? It's going to feel like a chore. It's going to feel like, here we go again. And it's the same with turning up for training or turning up for games. If it's just something, and listen, players get conditioned to just train, play, train, play, train, play, train, play. It becomes a kind of habit. But I... Not in a real sense of why, why are we doing this? And when you start questioning yourself, what, what, what am I training for training? Actually, I would rather go with my mates or oh, do they need to go to training? Oh, can they, do they need to sit in the car for three hours to get to where I'm meant to go? If there's no clear understanding of where this is taking them, then like anybody, it's going to lack that motivation. So I don't think people spend enough time establishing the goals they're setting. And that's not just long term goals. What's the goal for the season? What's the goal for the quarter? What's the goal for this week? What's the goal for the day? And when we get better at, at thinking about goals, then we can start thinking about if we're demotivated, if we've got the wrong goal, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So you and King's asked the question. You and you're becoming a regular on these things. It's nice to see you. I think the, you've, it's a two-part question. I think Jamie's just kind of answered the first part, but I'll read it out anyway. That was awesome. So first off, thank you. One thing from a coaching perspective, we have a British mindset where a lot of talented players don't reach their potential because it's too hard. There are bumps along the road. The imports will always have the EIHL jobs or they can have an easier ride, make more money playing at the lower levels rather than perceiving. So rather, sorry, than persevering and battling to reach their potential. How as coaches can we help these mindsets of players? Well, as you've kind of just answered that one, Jamie. But the other question that Ewan's asking is following up on that. How much of an athlete's game is mental and mindset versus athletic ability when it comes to achieving goals? Um, mental and mindset, up to a certain point, it's, it's quite small. It's in, in loving the game, it's enjoying it, it's having fun, it's stretching themselves, it's, it's um, being brave um, and taking on risks without the, the, the opinions of players, the opinions of coaches, the opinions of the parents, the opinions of spectators. But then... <clears throat> the pressure starts to go on. Nothing prepares an athlete to perform in front of other people. You know, I work with a lot of top players that go to play football at the highest level and you ask them, what prepares you separate in front of 50,000 people? Nothing. Nothing can prepare you for that. Um, and that's where the mental side comes into it. You know, I've got so many stories about people who commit to the development in the sport to the ages of 14, 15, 16, they've spent, they've committed eight, nine, ten years of their life to that dedicated sport. And then at the final point of actually taking a biggest jump to competing, where the demands are higher, they choose to go and play with their mates. They choose to go to an easier level. They choose to actually, I'm not really comfortable with this. And it's got nothing to do with talent. It's got nothing to do with potential. It's got nothing to do with how well they play in the game. It's to do with the, how they perceive other people thinking about them. And this is something that, and go back to your point, this British mentality. It's not a British mentality. It's a global mentality. You know, we're just aware of the mentality here because this is where we live. There's no different from Italy, America, Canada, it's just that they've got a bigger talent pool to select from. You know, if you look at the percentage of people who play in America or Canada compared to here, you know, how many 
people drop out of the game, how many people don't fulfill the potential, and the percentages will be a lot higher. So, so the mental side of the game is everywhere. It's just that we don't see that because other countries have got maybe more success than what we do due to their talent pool being a lot bigger. But they've got the same stories of people dropping out of the game. They've got the same stories of people not believing in themselves. They've got the same stories of um, whatever the, the culture is there. But we label ourselves here in Britain or in Scotland to say we've got this mindset and mentality. We've got the same mindset and mentality as anywhere else. But we use that as an excuse to why we're not being the best. And we label coaches and we label players and we label clubs the people then say, well, that's what people believe about me, so that's what that's the level of expectations I've got to go to. And when they say, oh, well, we're only British, oh, we're only Scottish, then let's be honest, we've got the same potential as anybody else to be the best. But there's something deeply rooted subconsciously in us that we believe that we're not be the best. So in our behaviours and our words and our actions, that's how we do. That's how we, that's, that's our attitude towards certain things. So in order for us to get better, we need to change what we're thinking about. Do we really believe we're world class? What is world class? Ask yourself that question. Thank you. Next question is from Darren. After injury, what tips do you have for motivation? Or just to add to that, maybe, or maybe during injury, what tips do you have for motivation? Listen, during and after. During injury, it's, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's really tough because you get... The one thing with injuries, you get too much time with yourself. You get too much time to think, not enough time being busy and being active. But it goes back to when you're injured, how do you want to be when you come back from injury? Actually, go and research on people who've bounced back from injury. How do they bounce back? How can you model yourself on people who have done certain things? So, Darren, you said you broke your ankle. How many players have broken their ankle? You're the only person who's broke your ankle. How many people have broken their ankle, came back and actually achieved on the world stage and it became the best. Go and research them. What did they do when they were injured? Because the beautiful thing is that we do not need to reinvent the wheel because people have written a path before us. And all we need to do is find that right path and follow it and see what happens. Okay. Karen's asked, that's one for me. Hi, Stephen, I noticed this has been recorded. Will it be available afterwards? My son isn't here today and I'd love him to see this. Karen, as long as Jamie's happy with it, we'll be putting it on our YouTube channel um, in, the, in the next sort of couple of days. So yes, it will be available for everybody. Um, see oh, a thumbs up from Jamie there. He's ha obviously happy. So next one, another Darren, Darren Carter. How do you manage parents when you work on a player's mindset and how a poor performance is not the end all? They go to the parent and they undo all the work you've done. <clears throat> How do you manage parents? Well, the question is, do you need to manage parents? The biggest thing for me is relationships. What is your relationship like with your parents? Do you speak to your parents on a regular basis? Or do you shy away from them? And that's the same with player-to-coach relationship, coach-to-parent relationship. Player, you know, it's all to do with relationships. And if you can have a conversation about, let's be honest, but the reason we're doing this is that the player is at the centre. All right? The reason we do this is because it's all about the players. It's not about the coaches. It's not about the parents. It's to do with the people who turn up on the ice. And if we've got that broad understanding that everything we do as coaches, everything we do as parents, everything we do as a club, everything we do with schools, everything we do as a sport itself, if we think about the reason we do all of this is to give the best opportunity to the players on the ice. Because I do a lot of work with parents, and let's be honest, as a parent, the players on the ice are an extended representation of you. So when the players are doing well, you feel amazing. You walk about with your chest puffed out, shoulders back going, oh, how are you getting on, parents? When your player is doing crap, you don't speak to anybody. In Dundee, we call that a mentor. Yeah? Your bairn gives you a mentor because they're not performing well. So you put your head down and you walk past players, you walk past coaches, and when the player gets in the car, you tell them what for. How dare you make me feel like this? 
You embarrass me. Yeah, so sometimes it's the self-regulation of the parent that impacts on the player's performance. So we've got to have a real understanding of actually, how do we self-regulate? Do we behave and actually behave with the way that we expect our players and our children to behave? Do we talk the talk and walk the walk? And that's subconscious as well. How do we praise? How do we deal with challenge? And these are things, do, do you see your player actually showing behaviours that you've got on the ice? The way they speak to their coaches, the way they speak to their players, the way they speak to the referee? Because that's conditioned. So how do you manage parents? By having a really good relationship. Okay. Rudy's asking, how can you overcome having a bad game or disappointments? Move on. Absolutely. Very short, short, short and sweet and to the point answer, Rudy. Don't dwell on it. Um, and it looks like the last question we've got here is from Scott Campbell. Hi, Scott. How would you approach managing a player that pays more heed to what their parents tell them than the coaches? Um, you would empathise with the player because it's not their fault. And what you would then do is have a discussion with a parent to find out if there's a consistency of language because what you're seeing is a confused player. You're telling them one thing, parents are telling them another thing, and you're probably seeing a frustrated, angry, withdrawn person because, of, let's be honest, as children, we want to please the adults around us. Actually, <clears throat> the goals the players have got, whose goals are they? Are they the players' goals, or are they the coaches' goals, or are they the parents' goals? Who's got ownership over their goals? So think about that when you're actually having a discussion with the players. Excellent. Thank you very much. That looks like that's all the questions. Martin, Barry, have you got anything you want to chip in with? I've got um, I've got a question unrelated to all this, Jamie. Uh-huh. The picture behind you, the CFAX thing. Uh-huh. Which game is it? <laughs> what game do you think it is? <laughs> I think it's probably, I don't know, Dundee winning something. That's uh, Dundee 2, Dundee United 1. <laughs> in 2016 when Craig Whiten put Dundee United down it's the only thing we've had to celebrate in the past three decades <laughs> thought it would be something like that and him there you go <laughs> Mr Kevin McNaughton painted that for me did he? yes <laughs> that is um, career after football yeah yes, he's doing very well yeah Jamie, I've got one question for you. Um, what do you think is the different ingredient uh, in, in guys' mindsets that make it to the top level in football versus the guys that drop out? I know you've talked a lot about this, but is there, a, is there any one thing that you could say that guy made it because of X ingredient that he got to the top level in football or any sport in the world versus kids that just don't quite get there. Is there one thing kids could do? I know you've, you've covered that whole thing, but is there one kind of summary of that? Um, there's a number of things, but the biggest thing for me is deep down inside, without them actually realising it, is to ask themselves a question every single day, is what is it I can do to make myself better? <laughs> there must be something more I can do to make myself better. And <clears throat> they never stop. No, so what we perceive as being the best is only the best in comparison to the people around it at that point in time. There's always somebody who's going to be better than you. So, so I use Michael Jordan for example. Michael Jordan was no and in the eyes of other people was succeeding after time after time after time. And the question in his head was I need to maintain that. No, so it's, it's the easiest thing is to get to that level, but the toughest thing is maintaining or going even further. And that takes um, a lot more. Uh, it's not just about you know, technical or physical attributes. It's actually 
what can I do to continue to get better? Um, and this is where, um, you know, as coaches and parents, we can facilitate that language on a regular basis. You know, we can reflect and say, okay, this is where we got to, but what, ne what is next? What is next? What is next? Because as soon as you stop, that's when complacency sits in. I think it's a continual drive to, to improve. It's internal. It's internal. You know, you can't approach that. It's very. It's, it's that passion and internal drive that somebody's got to be even better. And it's just being a twenty four seven person in whatever sector or industry or sport. And did, I like what, did you watch the last dance with Michael Jordan? Did you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, but that just shows you that that's got nothing to do with coaches. That's got nothing to do with players. He, you no, know, at times put himself under pressure on purpose for him to grow. One of the things that always struck in my mind about Michael Jordan, Jamie, and I think it was, it was in the original presentations you used to do for the the Scottish um, squads when you when you used to come up to the Dundee Ice Rink was the the fact that Michael Jordan, when he, I think when he was fifteen, he got cut from his high school basketball team because his coach told him he wasn't good enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I think that just obviously inspired them to say, "No, I'm 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 going to work on this. I'm going to I'm going to believe in this, and I'm I'm going to practice." And, and he became what what was he MVP five times in the NBA, six times, something like that. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Andy's got a question there about um, body language. Yeah, I just saw that pop up. Last question from Andy before we wrap this up: How much can body language impact your game mentally? I see a lot of young players with bad body language, which I feel transfers into their game. Body language is a result, <clears throat> you know, as a result of thoughts and feelings. So a lot of people say to about players, he's got a great attitude, or he's got a bad attitude. And the only thing we can see about people's attitude is what we can physically see. And attitude is a composite of thoughts, feelings, and actions, and we only see the actions part of it. So we need to get set that back and say, well, why is that? Why is it as their body language like that? And that may be a lack of self-belief. It might be something that's happened in the car on the way to a game. It might be actually, I'm not entirely sure what my role is. It's, it's a, it starts from thoughts. All starts with, everything starts from thoughts. And if you can change somebody's thinking, you will change how they feel. And as a result, you'll see how they behave. And that will impact on the results. So you've got to really think deeply, why is it somebody's acting and behaving like that? And once you get to the root cause, then you can start to have a better understanding and you'll see it's changing. And actually, I was, I was reading a chapter in a book yesterday. I can't remember the name of the book. And it was a, a story of somebody who was a baseball player and he his coach came up and said, why is it that... that you're just so lazy. We're, we're, we're dropping you for the team. And you know what? You're just you're just too lazy in comparison to everybody else. And he kind of said to him, well, I'm not being lazy. And the reason I'm that I'm limiting my, what I'm doing is because I'm scared of making mistakes. I'm scared of what you're going to say as a coach. I'm scared of my parents. And I'm, I'm scared of what the spectators will, how they'll react if I'm going to try to express myself. So he made a commitment from that day that, you know what? I'm going to be more enthusiastic about certain things. So the next club he went to, he never knew any players, he never knew the coaches, he never knew any other parents. And the first sign, the first impression was, I'm going to put on a show of being the most enthusiastic person here, regardless of how I play. Um, and he played the best game he's ever played. And he was labelled with this absolute dynamo of energy because that's the first thing he said. So he, he started to live by that. So it was a, it was a masquerade, it was an act but he taught himself to be enthusiastic. And something severe happened that he had to stop playing because of an injury. And he was then, um, he, he got involved in sales and, and selling insurance. And he was doing pretty crap after 12 months. And his boss said to him, you know, you've got a month left, your attitude's stinking. And the same conversation he had with his new boss was the same conversation he had with his coach when he was younger about his attitude. So he just switched his attitude overnight and became the best salesperson in the business. So the point being is that when you can change your attitude, you change your thinking and your enthusiasm, everything else takes, moves forward. And it all starts by turning up and, be, and believing that you can be the best. See what happens. Okay, I think that's a good, time, a good point to wrap it up on then if, there's, if, if nobody has any more questions. Um, 
Jamie, can't thank you enough for giving up your time. Uh, like I said, I can sit and listen to you talk about growth mindset all day. Um, I really hope everybody from players, coaches, and any parents lurking around listening in the background, I hope you all got something from that today. There's definitely something to take about how the mind plays such a massive part in sport. Even, um, can, I just, can I just share one more slide? Yeah, please. Um, just that, I've, you know, a lot of people say to me, what do I do next? Four months ago, I, I thought right, I need to. I started up a couple of Facebook pages um, just to help people. So there's there's a place called Your Best Self. You know, search for that on, on Facebook. You can ask to join that group. I've got my own Facebook page now. It started in November where I go on and just speak regularly um, about stuff like this. And I've actually set up um, a little mini course called Mindset Reset. So there's a, a free course that people can tap into that has a little ebook that talks about mindset, talks about habits, talks about goal setting, talks about routines. Um, so people can see, um, you know, can think about what this is. This is not just about sport, by the way. This is about and um, holistically, how do we lead our lives to be the best we can be? So, I thought we'd just share that with people before before we finish. Thank you. I've just liked why why mindset already. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so, kids, thanks for your time, coaches. Parents, glad you joined us again. Um, hope to see you all again soon. Now, the next thing we've got coming up for you guys, for those of you that are, old, that are 14 and above that are on this call today, we've got an online fitness session tomorrow at 12 with uh, Robert Henderson. And for all you guys 13 and under, your off-ice session is going to be on Tuesday night with Stuart Edwards. Okay? Thanks, everybody, for joining today. Um, we'll see you all again soon. All right? Jamie, if you can just hang fire for two minutes. Nobody's bit.